Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on introduction to heat transfer phenomena. So, uh, as uh, we are going to have uh, the study on the Tundis flow. So, uh, in Tundis uh, there is a flow of uh, molten steel or uh, you know any molten metal which is at very high temperature and uh, since it is flowing. So, we have studied about the con uh, basics of the fluid flow phenomena. Then also in that flow we talked about the turbulence and uh, we had uh, some idea about how to model this turbulence. So, because of the turbulence certain extra terms are coming in those uh, equations. Uh, so, how to model them? So, that we have uh, studied in the uh, you know earlier uh, lectures. Now, uh, we will have to have some uh, fundamental understanding about the heat transfer phenomena. Uh, because uh, the heat transfer is an essential part uh, of that process, heat transfer will be taking place uh, by different modes and uh, that affects uh, the process uh, that affects the uh, flow configuration also in many cases. So, we need to have the understanding about uh, the uh, heat transfer uh, phenomena. Now, uh, coming to the uh, heat transfer as you know there are uh, basically three modes of uh, uh, you know heat uh, transfer and that is conduction, convection and uh, radiation. So, uh, as you know that uh, you know uh, whenever there will be a uh, you know uh, gradient of temperature will be there. So, when uh, there will be change of temperature there in the body. So, there will be uh, you know uh, transfer of energy trans uh, will be there from uh, higher temperature towards the uh, lower temperature side and uh, you know that is uh, your uh, conduction. Then uh, we will talk about the uh, uh, convection where uh, because of the uh, you know fluid uh, motion or fluid in contact uh, comes into picture. So, um, that time you have convection and then you have the uh, uh, radiation. So, that is uh, because of the electromagnetic radiation which is emitted by the temperature maintained at higher uh, you know by the body maintained at higher temperature. So, you have three modes and all these three modes are active in the case of uh, the steel making uh, process. For example, if you uh, talk about uh, normal uh, tundis, so you have the uh, inlet and then you have the uh, you may have the outlet. So, this is your inlet and these are the uh, outlet. So, uh, what happens that the uh, high temperature metal which is coming. So, you have a uh, you know ladle here. So, from the ladle your high temperature metal will, uh, will be uh, coming and uh, uh, getting poured into the uh, tundis. Now, uh, this will be striking at uh, uh, this point and then it will be going and moving inside. So, they will be having contact with these uh, walls of the uh, tundis. Now, these uh, tundis walls are normally uh, refractory lined, uh, but still there is heat transfer taking place. So, those heat transfer which is taking place from here. So, the heat transfer uh, in between uh, these uh, places which take place uh, there and then also heat transfer which will be there at the uh, surface because of the fluid uh, motion. So, that will be uh, the convection further and then the heat transfer is also taking place uh, from these uh, surfaces. So, from the here it is the heat will be uh, going out. So, they will be normally by the in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, that is by radiation mechanism. So, all these uh, three kind of uh, you know heat transfer modes are there 
in the case of uh, tundis and we need to understand and we also will see that where it will be uh, required uh, in our case. Uh, basically, when we uh, try to solve the uh, equations, so we will have the energy conservation equation that we have uh, already seen in our uh, you know uh, previous lectures. So, uh, we are solving for the temperature and that uh, we need to supply uh, these uh, uh, you know uh, the boundary conditions and we need to give uh, that in what way the heat transfer is taking place. So, suppose for, uh, from the inlet you will have to specify the temperature of the material or the metal which is going into, but then the heat transfer which is taking place uh, you know from these walls need to be shown. So, you will have the, uh, uh, the heat flux which is uh, there from these walls or from the top surface they need to be provided. So, so this will be the input uh, to the model and then we will get the uh, you know uh, we will have to solve the equation and uh, get the temperature distribution inside the uh, tundis. So, uh, coming to the uh, you know uh, conduction. So, the conduction is that when the temperature gradient will be existing in the uh, body. So, there will be energy transfer from the high temperature region to the uh, low temperature region. So, this type of heat transfer is called heat. So, in the body itself you have um, when you have the temperature gradient. So, just like uh, you can see if you see this uh, tundis, so if you have a tundis and you have the uh, you know this there will be refractory lining. So, if you talk about the uh, you know lining now in this case this temperature is quite high and, and this is close to this is exposed to the uh, you know uh, external uh, atmosphere. So, that is surrounding now in that uh, um, you will have the uh, tem because of the temperature gradient there will be uh, uh, you know propagation of heat. Uh, so, there will be that will be done by conduction in this because uh, through this uh, uh, material. So, that is by uh, uh, conduction. So, that is uh, the uh, conduction. So, you have a solid body this uh, one side is a heat temperature side. So, in the case of Tundis the face uh, of uh, the wall uh, which is uh, in contact with the molten steel. So, that is having high temperature and the um, external face of the Tundis which is a steel cell normally. So, that is at a lower temperature. So, certainly in between you have the refractory material. So, so there will be a transfer of heat through that medium and uh, through that material and uh, uh, from the high temperature to the low temperature region and this type of uh, the heat transfer mode that will be uh, your uh, you know uh, conduction mode. Uh, so, in, in, in conduction uh, normally uh, we use the Fourier's law of uh, heat conduction and uh, basically what has been seen that the heat transfer which is there it will be uh, proportional to the uh, temperature gradient then area and also the uh, time. So, uh, if you uh, talk about uh, uh, so this is uh, d theta is nothing but the uh, uh, theta 2 minus theta 1. So, if you have uh, uh, you know a, a, a region that is uh, this is the higher temperature uh, side and this is the lower temperature side you have the, this side the temperature is theta 1 and this type side the temperature is theta 2. So, there will be uh, you know uh, flow of heat from, um, uh, from this side to uh, this side. Now, uh, that will be uh, proportional to what has been found by Fourier that it is proportional to the uh, temperature gradient. So, uh, how much is the uh, gradient that is d theta and uh, that so that is uh, d theta by d x basically. So, this is uh, d theta by d x uh, this is the uh, you know d x for an element if you take d x. So, this is the length d x if you take x in this side. So, d x will be uh, a smaller part of it. So, d x incremental part then uh, it will also be proportional to the uh, area of 
uh, which is there in contact. So, if uh, higher is the area, higher will be the heat transfer. Similarly, higher will be the times so for, for how much time it is uh, you know the heat transfer is. So, if you calculate for higher amount of time it will be more there will be more heat transfer. So, then in that case uh, that uh, there was a constant of proportionality added and that co constant of proportionality uh, gives you uh, that is lambda or many a times we call it as a k also that is the thermal conductivity of this material. So, uh, this way uh, you know uh, we uh, find this q. Now, if you try to have for per unit area and, and also rate of the heat transfer. So, we divide it by a and t. So, in that case q will be becoming minus of uh, lambda d theta by d x. Now, uh, the minus sign as you know you must have the idea that we normally give this uh, minus sign because d theta term is negative. So, because uh, theta 2 minus theta in uh, 1 this term will be uh, negative in this case. So, that is why we are putting it uh, you know minus so that you have altogether you will have the positive term. Now, uh, what we need to do when we try to if you try to see the uh, you know uh, turn this in that uh, also uh, we need to. So, if you are uh, modeling uh, any turn this flow. So, in that case uh, you need to have the, uh, the dimensions of this uh, part. Also you need to uh, you can specify the uh, temperature on this side and temperature on this side and uh, um, also you need to. So, so basically uh, you know if the dimension is known and uh, the uh, temperature uh, is also known on these two extreme sides then uh, d theta by dx will be known and uh, then if you know the k so or, or lambda. So, that is what is required. So, that way you can have the uh, conduction heat transfer you can find uh, in those cases. So, what is uh, what will be required when you go to the modeling uh, of uh, the uh, this flow and, and you are required to give the boundary conditions for the uh, temperature or thermal uh, boundary conditions on the wall. Uh, you need to specify the material of the wall. So, if you have the refractory you need to provide the refractory material with the appropriate value of the uh, thermal conductivity. So, that is what the uh, there will be the use will be for uh, the uh, uh, thermal conductivity of the uh, material. So, uh, that will be varying for different materials and you can have the, the appropriate value of the thermal conductivity of uh, in the material. So, there may be ceramics of different type and you can have the thermal conductivity value from the literature for those uh, you know values. Uh, so, uh, accordingly uh, we try to uh, model the uh, conduction part. Now, coming to the uh, convection. So, in, in, in conduction we know that we need to have the value of the um, uh, thermal conductivity and uh, this is the property of the material and that will be required to have the uh, value of the conductive uh, uh, heat uh, flux. Uh, or conductive heat uh, you know which is transferred heat uh, transfer by conduction. Now, uh, heat transfer is uh, also accompanied by the fluid motion. So, um, uh, you will have uh, the this is your surface area A this you have the surface temperature uh, S uh, theta S. So, uh, and the, the Q is the uh, heat flow and uh, your approaching flow temperature is uh, uh, you know Q F. So, in that case uh, what we uh, see that uh, we get the uh, you know expression for the uh, uh, you know heat uh, uh, convected uh, by the Newton's law of cooling. So, Newton's law of cooling tells that Q is uh, basically equal to alpha times theta S minus theta F times A T. 
So, uh, again uh, you can have the uh, expression for the q that is alpha times uh, theta s minus uh, theta f and uh, in this case uh, you know we, we have the term that is uh, the uh, heat transfer coefficient which is uh, uh, coming into picture uh, in, in such cases in the case of uh, you know uh, convection. So, uh, you will have uh, uh, these uh, values and uh, we are uh, using this uh, uh, many a times we also denote it uh, with h in place of alpha uh, in, in most of the cases we also try to have. Uh, so, heat flux what you see uh, you know q it's, it will be proportional to the uh, temperature difference uh, here and uh, you will have uh, uh, the values of uh, alpha into theta s minus uh, theta f. Uh, now, uh, what we need to know that when we talk about the convection, then uh, there are uh, two types of uh, convection mechanism. Uh, one is the, the free or natural convection and one is forced convection which is induced by the uh, external means. Now, uh, in the case of uh, free or natural convection, uh, you know what happens that uh, because of that, uh, so that is basically induced by the uh, buoyancy forces and it is uh, uh, basically in those cases when there will be uh, change in the density. So, in that case you will have and the, uh, the loop formation or the uh, there will be a convection uh, current which will be generated because of uh, you know those uh, uh, you know natural uh, you know drop in the temperature or because of the change in the density or so. So, that happens uh, so uh, also in the case of uh, uh, Tundis where it has been seen that in, in, in case of Tundis when uh, uh, you have uh, the temperature difference in the Tundis uh, you know uh, and it is of uh, uh, the significant magnitude uh, larger uh, magnitude. In that case because of that uh, you will have a convection loop which is formed and uh, you that will be affecting the velocity profile uh, in the uh, Tundis also. So, that is uh, because of the uh, buoyancy uh, forces that is induced and uh, they may occur and this uh, uh, free convection or forced convection that may occur with phase change boiling or uh, the condensation processes. Now, if you talk about the uh, free uh, the value of uh, h that is heat transfer coefficient which is uh, having unit of watt per meter square Kelvin. So, in the case of free convection your uh, for the uh, gases you are getting the values as uh, you know 2 to 25 and for the liquids you have 50 to uh, 100. Whereas, when you have the uh, forced convection in that case uh, you have uh, the uh, you, if you look at the uh, value of these uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient it is um, uh, multiplied 10 times as compared to that in uh, free convection for gases. And uh, then for liquids also it is uh, going uh, maybe close to more than 200 times about 200 times. So, that is the you know uh, heat transfer mechanism uh, for I mean that is uh, what is required uh, you know that is how the heat transfer you know uh, uh, is uh, changed when you have uh, the forced convection uh, taking place. In the case of boiling and condensation that is even more it, it uh, goes to 2500 to about 1 lakh water per meter square uh, Kelvin. So, that is how the heat transfer you can see that how uh, you know these uh, heat tra transfer order uh, can be seen uh, to change when you have the uh, different in, in different way your uh, uh, you know uh, whether the convection is by uh, free mechanism or by the uh, force mechanism. So, in those cases you are having these uh, values. Then uh, you have uh, another uh, you know uh, part is the uh, uh, radiation. So, radiation is uh, again it is an electromagnetic radiation where it is emitted by the body as a uh, result of its uh, temperature. So, in that case what happens that you have a uh, 
a body which is at higher temperature. So, it will be emitting the radiation uh, towards the body of uh, uh, lower temperature. So, that is uh, uh, the uh, principle. So, that basically in terms of so this uh, flow which is uh, going to take place that is basically in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, that is why it is uh, uh, called as the uh, radiative uh, heat transfer. Now, uh, in, in case of Tundis, uh, what happens that you have uh, many surfaces which are open. So, you have the top uh, surface of the Tundis where you have slag layer or, or so which is also at higher temperature. So, there will be heat transfer taking place from that surface because uh, it is exposed to atmosphere and uh, that is slag is in uh, touch with hot metal and slag is also at very high temperature. So, they will be losing the heat to the surroundings and that is done by the uh, radiation mechanism. So, again here also you will have the similar uh, you know process, but here the temperature uh, you know the exponent which we use on the temperature and that is different and that is by the Stephen Boltzmann law. So, that we will see. So, so that way it is uh, uh, changing. So, uh, so, whenever we are dealing, dealing with these uh, you know uh, thermal conditions, so in that case you will be asked whether you want to give a condition where there is radiative heat transfer or not. So, that you can uh, you know uh, accordingly you can supply those uh, uh, conditions. So, if you talk about the radiation heat transfer, it is basically described by the Stephen uh, Boltzmann law and uh, that is uh, you know uh, by the expression sigma b times theta by 100 raised to the power you know, 4. So, basically that is for the uh, black body. So, uh, what happens that uh, normally you have uh, uh, as you see that it will be uh, a, a function of the uh, uh, you know fourth power of that temperature turn. So, you will have uh, if you look at uh, these uh, material you have a uh, you know uh, body. So, you it will be absorbing you will have incident energy then you have reflected and then you have uh, transmitted energy. So, that way we also try to have the radiative uh, heat fluxes we also try to provide uh, you know on the uh, uh, on those uh, surfaces from where the radiation has to uh, take place. Now, uh, after that uh, we need to know also few terminologies like uh, you have the hydrodynamic uh, boundary layer and uh, the thermal boundary layer. So, the hydrodynamic boundary layer will be defined as that region of flow where the viscous forces are felt. So, as we see that uh, you will have a region close to the wall uh, where uh, you will have the viscous forces are in dominance and uh, that uh, layer. So, you will have the formation of the hydrodynamic uh, uh, boundary layer. Similarly, you will have the thermal boundary layer also and this is that region where the temperature gradients are present in that flow. So, you will have the temperature gradients uh, you know that will be seen in that uh, you know uh, thermal boundary layer. Now, these temperature gradients would result from the heat exchange process between the uh, fluid and the wall. So, that is what we discussed that you have the fluid and uh, and the wall. So, you will have uh, uh, you know the uh, the heat uh, exchange process uh, taking place between uh, them and because of that uh, these uh, uh, temperature gradients uh, will be uh, resulting into. So, normally uh, there has been uh, the description of uh, the uh, hydrodynamic boundary layer and thermal boundary layer by uh, dealing with the Stokes uh, first problem and where uh, it is uh, dealt that uh, the uh, you know uh, you know there will be flow around the wide flat plate which is suddenly moved from rest to a constant velocity and uh, then what will happen that the fluid which is adjacent to the plate will be moving with uh, time. So, once you are uh, moving now that uh, uh, layer which is uh, this layer will be called as the hydrodynamic boundary layer and the velocity of the fluid will be decreasing in the direction normal to the plate. So, as we know that it will be decreasing in that direction normal to the plate from V on the surface to the of the plate to 0 outside that layer and the thickness also is found to be increasing with time 
by uh, this expression. So, delta h which will be uh, 4 of v f into t raised to the power half. So, that way you are getting this uh, you know uh, uh, nu f and uh, this is uh, nu f is nothing but uh, the uh, this is kinematic viscosity of the uh, fluid. So, uh, you know if you look at the development of the this is a nu f. So, this is if you look at the uh, you know hydrodynamic boundary layer formation. So, they are uh, you know uh, they are very much the growth of this hydrodynamic boundary layer they are a function of this uh, kinematic viscosity uh, of the mud. Uh, uh, so, in that case it is a measure of the uh, momentum exchange of the uh, flow. Now, in the same manner uh, you can have the uh, thickness of the thermal boundary layer also on the flat plate and that is governed by uh, k f uh, the, the property k f that is your thermal diffusivity and that is uh, lambda f by rho f c p. So, it is also sometimes in, in some terminology you will be as k by rho c p. So, k is nothing but lambda f that is uh, thermal conductivity then this is uh, you know uh, rho and uh, uh, this is the C p. So, this is rho density and this is the specific heat at uh, constant pressure. So, that way uh, you know we uh, uh, try to have these uh, uh, you know uh, thermal uh, boundary layers also. So, that will be uh, governed by these uh, uh, processes. Uh, coming to the uh, different uh, types of uh, you know uh, the uh, dimensionless numbers which uh, we will be required which will be coming across uh, you know in our study and uh, that will be uh, you know first is the Prandtl number. So, this Prandtl number is the uh, ratio of the kinetic viscosity that is uh, nu f uh, to the uh, thermal diffusivity k f. So, that way uh, we define this uh, nu f by uh, uh, k f. So, uh, it is uh, basically the direct measure of the ratio of thickness of the hydraulic and the uh, thermal boundary layer as we have seen. So, it will be uh, measuring the ratio of the uh, thickness of the hydraulic and the uh, uh, thermal uh, boundary layer. You have uh, another uh, you know uh, 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 relevant dimensionless number that is your Smith number uh, SC. And uh, this uh, Smith number it is the ratio of the uh, kinematic viscosity uh, to the co uh, diffusion coefficient uh, d we have already seen earlier also. So, in that case also you, you take the ratio. So, that is your uh, many a times we have the turbulent Smith number and all that. So, this basically will be talking about the uh, ratio of the uh, kinematic viscosity nu f. Uh, to the diffusion coefficient d and this is uh, the Smith number. So, uh, these are uh, you know these are the, the apart from that you will have uh, uh, there are many other numbers which will be uh, coming into picture uh, like when we talk about the uh, you know uh, natural convection in that case uh, as you know that uh, that deals uh, with the numbers like grass of number or so. And when we deal with that uh, we have already seen that there is another uh, number that is Tundis Richardson number uh, that also is used many a times uh, while we deal with uh, the thermal analysis uh, of the Tundis flow. So, uh, so these uh, you know uh, I mean these terminologies will be useful while analyzing the, uh, the output which we get by uh, after post processing operation. So, in those cases you can have the, the idea of uh, you know the value of these uh, you know uh, parameters or these numbers and by that you can uh, compare you know uh, the, um, the processes or, or, or the compare the uh, different cases. Apart from that uh, we will have also uh, we will be dealing with certain uh, phenomena like uh, the phase change or so that is what we had uh, seen earlier. So, uh, you know you need to also see that uh, how there will be uh, uh, you, you will have the different models which uh, talk about the phase changes during the heat transfer. So, many cases of, uh, and mostly in metals when you uh, your temperature goes uh, below certain limit. So, that starts uh, changing 
two different phase. So, the liquid uh, phase will be changing to the uh, solid phase and in that case uh, if that phase change is taking place many a times uh, we have the change in the properties when we are uh, there is change in phase. So, you will have the conductivity uh, values or heat transfer coefficient values which is uh, used especially the conductivity values will be different when we have uh, the, the phase change taking place. So, those also need to be uh, looked into so that so that will be governed by the material properties also because uh, that will only say that when the temperature becomes lower than that you will have uh, basically the change of phase from one phase to other. So, you will have different equations which will be talking about the uh, you know transformation of one phase to other in a gradual manner and then how the it will be affecting the heat transfer or fluid flow you know in the domain. So, these things uh, may be used by us in our uh, uh, you know lectures to come when we deal with that particular uh, situations. Thank you very much.